It's Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're joined today by Robert Davis. He is a trustee with the Antelope Valley High School District. You have eight high schools in your region, and many of those high schools have some pretty terrific facilities. Absolutely. That outside organizations may be interested in using. Yes. What is the law today as it relates to the use of public school facilities by outside organizations? Uh, there is an educational code that uh, speaks to the fact that the public, the, uh, sc the school districts provide the public for usage of those facilities mm. and, and there's a policy for that. And the policy provides for a fee or not? Well, that's uh, basically up to the local school districts and how they uh, govern that and how they put that policy together. So let's talk about Antelope Valley because I understand there has been some concern about how facilities are being rented out, uh, whether fees are being charged, and to your mind, whether there has been preferential treatment for certain organizations over others. Y yes, and what I've discovered in, in looking into this is that there has been several organizations that has been using our facilities for a number of years, okay. uh, and, and they seem to get the first preferential treatment huh. for that. Um, there's been other organizations that has requested usage, however, they've been told that because a type organization right. is using that facility that there's no space available. And as I understand it, um, part of your concern is the organizations are led by, we'll call it insiders. One of the organizations is a sports group and their coach happens to also be a high school teacher. An uh, other organization. And, and let me correct. You. She's not a high school teacher. She's our high school volleyball coach. Thank you. Okay. And another organization. There is one of your co-trustees who's affiliated with that organization. Uh, she's a, with a separate organization. Yes. Mm. Yes. That's getting in your mind preferential treatment. Well, I, I believe when you're sitting on the board like that, mm -hmm. how does that work? And so, given those two scenarios. What do you hope to see? Because in addition to your perce perception that they're getting preferential treatment, they're not paying fees, uh, what can be done about this? Well, my, my feeling is, is that um, are all organizations being given mm -hmm. that opportunity to use our facilities? And what my, uh, concerns me the most is that uh, a couple of these organizations that I found um, are using the facilities, but at the same time, uh, these organizations are paying their coaches and in addition they're charging exorbitant fees to the students that are part of those organizations. Look, I'm, I'm all for students being able to get that extra help right. or that evening help or that coach's help, but my question has always been if you want to provide these great opportunities for our students, why aren't you doing this for free? Why are, mm. you, why are you charging students and parents all these exorbitant fees. And when it comes to that, and we'll talk a little bit more about diversity, uh, the students that um, can't afford these types of fees, are they being excluded from these types of great organizations? So you've shined a light on this. Where do you go from here? I understand that the district engaged in an investigation and as I understand it, you're concerned the investigation was not either thorough or independent. What can you do to continue this crusade well, of yours? Um, I, I believe going forward we're looking at uh, creating a new district policy and making it fair across the board for all organizations. And I believe uh, our districts and other districts need to do a better job of advertising that we have these facilities mm. open for these different organizations to come in and use these facilities. But let's make it a fair playing board for everyone that mm -hmm. wants to use the facilities. I want to talk about diversity. You mentioned diversity, and you have expressed some concerns about the diversity of your faculty. For example, if you look at uh, the number of Hispanic students in your district, it's about 57%. Yes. 
but the number of uh, teachers of Latino descent is about 18%. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Anglo population, about 21% of your students are Anglo and about 70% of your teachers are Anglo. Absolutely. You know, it begs the question, does the ethnicity of a teacher matter? Right in your mind. Right, and, and Brad, th this is an issue that is nationwide, not only in our district. Mm -hmm. However, I believe that we should focus on this issue even more. Look, I, I believe that any teacher can go in and teach academics. Mm -hmm. However, there's more than academics being taught in a school. There's, a, there's, there's many facets of what students see and hear each day. You have to remember that during the day, these students are with us longer than they are with right. their parents or caregivers. So we have that opportunity to really teach many facet, different types of things. And so what, what I'm seeing is, and this has been a trend going on for many years, students going into the teaching profession uh, are, not te are, are not students of color. Mm -hmm. And one, I, I believe the colleges need to do a better job at recruiting students and getting them prepared to come mm. into the teaching profession. And, but and do you think, sir, that <clears throat> Antelope Valley or other districts need to do a better job recruiting teachers of color? Yes, and I, and I believe there's colleges throughout the whole United States that we can attend these recruiting sessions and find teachers. Now, as you know though, California is facing a severe teacher shortage. Ab yes. I mean, last year, California had 43,000 teacher vacancies. Um, in the last decade, we've had a 70% drop in California Californians that are looking to enter the teaching profession. The numbers are really quite concerning. Right. And, and those students that's entering the teaching field are of Anglo descent. Mm. So when, when do we begin to show our students what our students are seeing in their educational process from K to 12? If they're not seeing teachers that look like I them, understand that. then why would they go into a profession that they feel that they're somewhat excluded from? So given this shortage, and given that you're a high school district, can you work with local community colleges or four-year institutions to try to incentivize folks to enter the teaching profession? I mean, look, you know, some would say there's a war on teachers. There's the Vagara question about teacher tenure. Um, you can argue both sides of that question. Uh, teacher pay is okay. Some would argue it should be higher. What can you do? Well, one, it, it's not only about going out and recruiting, but our diversity training consists of maybe one day or a half a day of training for mm -hmm. our teachers. I, I look at why aren't we providing more diversity training for all teachers, no matter of what color, and let students be part of that. Because once everything is together and everyone sees that we're working on this, I, I think it really goes down to the students seeing what's going on in their school. Is there an attempt to really diversify the training of our staff within our districts? I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank you for shining a light on these issues. Clearly, they're important to you. Yes. And we'd like you to come back sometime and give us some updates on these two items because clearly uh, people are talking about him. Yes. His name is Robert Davis. He is a trustee with the Antelope Valley High School District. My name is Brad Pomerantz.